Hey guys, welcome to the first lecture. In this lecture, we will start with learning what Java Reflection is and get the motivation of what we can achieve using Reflection in our program. And finally, we will conclude with a short discussion about the challenges that come with Java Reflection, which we will learn to overcome throughout the course. So what is Java Reflection? Java Reflection is a powerful language and JVM feature that gives us runtime access to information about our application's classes and objects. Those features are available to us through the Reflection API, which is a set of classes and methods that come with every JDK. Using Java Reflection API, we can write flexible code that links different software components together at runtime and creates a new program flow without making any modifications to the source code. Reflection also allows us to write extremely powerful general purpose algorithms that dynamically adapt and change their behavior based on the type of objects or classes they are working on. So the regular code we usually write and execute as a program takes data as input, analyzes that data, performs some operations on it, and gives us an output. To put that in contrast, a program we write with reflection treats both data and the application's code as inputs, analyzes and performs operations on both, and produces an output. With that ability to analyze our application's objects and classes at runtime and use that as an input, we can create very powerful libraries, frameworks, and software designs that would otherwise be impossible to create. To get a glimpse of what Reflection is capable of, let's explore a few examples of popular frameworks and libraries that are powered by Java Reflection. Don't worry if you're not familiar with those technologies, they are out of scope for the course and we are mentioning them just for motivation purposes. One of the most widely used frameworks that takes advantage of Java Reflection is JUnit, which is the standard framework for unit testing of Java applications. If we have a test class with test methods that test one of our classes, like the class car for example, without JUnit we would have to create a new program with a main method where we would have to manually instantiate our test class and then manually set up and call each test method individually. With JUnit powered by Java Reflection, we can remove all this boilerplate and focus only on our test logic. By simply annotating our setup method with the before annotation, we tell JUnit to run the setup method before every test. And by annotating each test method with the test annotation, we tell JUnit that this method is one of our test methods. And that's it. Just by providing those annotations, JUnit will create a new program for us, it will instantiate our test class, and using reflection, it will find all our methods and run them in the correct order based on their annotations. Once it's done executing all the tests, it will provide us with a report. During the course, we will learn how to achieve similar functionality and also create our own annotations. Another class of very heavy users of reflection are dependency injection and configuration frameworks like Spring, Google Juice, and others. For example, if we have the class car that requires an engine object and a driver object, without dependency injection, we would have to know how to create those dependencies while creating an object of type car. That tightly couples our car class to the details of creating all of its dependencies. Using a dependency injection framework like Spring, for example, we can define our car class while delegating the creation of its dependencies to other places in our code and Spring, using reflection, would automatically wire our dependencies to our dependent class car. All we need to do is use the auto-wired annotation, which will help Spring, which in turn uses reflection, understand that those dependencies need to be injected at runtime. In a completely different class, which we mark as our configuration, we place the actual methods that create the concrete dependencies, which we also mark with a special bean annotation. And that's it! When we start the application, Spring Framework will find our car class, find the engine and the driver beans, create those objects and inject them into our car class constructor while creating an object of type car. And all of that is done automatically using reflection under the hood. Another use case is libraries that perform conversion between a protocol like JSON and Java objects. 
Given a JSON string as an input, a library like Jackson or Google JSON can inspect a given class using reflection, analyze all its fields, and populate them with values taken from the JSON string solely based on the field names. And the users of such a library can do it essentially with just one line of code. All they need is to provide the JSON text input and the type of object they want to convert the JSON to. Similarly, any Java object of any class can be converted to JSON just as easily. And all of that functionality as well can be provided to the users as a single method call, while all the magic happens under the hood using reflection. Other popular use cases of Java Reflection include logging frameworks, ORMs, web frameworks, developer tools, and many, many more. But Java Reflection is not reserved only for those external libraries, and we can do so much more with Reflection for architecting our own applications and libraries and augment them with unique functionality and features. Now, not surprisingly, the greatest challenge of using Java Reflection comes from its ability to do very powerful things and even get access to internal and hidden structures. If used incorrectly or not for the right purpose, we risk making our code harder to maintain, slower to run, and in some cases even dangerous to execute, as Reflection code has the potential to crush our application unrecoverably. So as the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. And that is why reflection is often reserved for skilled developers who have a strong grasp of the Java language. But no worries, in this course we will learn how to use reflection correctly and safely while practicing our knowledge on real-life use cases. And by the end of the course, we will not only have confidence in our skills, but will also develop the intuition on when to use reflection in our own projects. So before we wrap up and move to the next lecture, let's quickly summarize what we learned so far. We learned that Java Reflection is a language and JVM feature that allows us to write Java code that analyzes other code and gets special information and access to our application's classes and objects. We talked about some of the many use cases for Java Reflection, both in popular external libraries and for our own applications. And finally, we mentioned some of the challenges of using Java Reflection and the reasons we will need to take extra care while using it in our own projects. See you guys soon in the next lecture.